Hey, what's up everyone? Welcome to another episode of Spitting Venom, aka The Venom Vlog, and I'm sorry I'm a little late with these. I did two videos the other day, you know, one about Scott Deckert, and then we did the Venomize review. And so last night when I got home from work, I just passed out and went to sleep. So it's uh, it's early Friday morning. I'm going to try to record this and get this up as soon as possible. And uh, today we're going to talk about the story of Carlton Drake. So we already talked about Eddie Brock. We talked about uh, Anne Weying. And these are, again, just kind of my accounts, uh, like my interpretation of like what's been going on in the comics uh, with these characters. Characters. So, of course, I'm not covering the whole history. If I made a story of Eddie Brock video in one video, it'd probably be like a 45-minute video at least. Uh, and that's, you know, that's putting it lightly because there's a lot to talk about that character. So there will be things I might miss in this, but some of them I miss intentionally. Some of them I might miss accidentally. So if you think I don't cover anything that I should have covered, let me know down in the comments so we can at least discuss it down there. And what we're doing and why we're doing these is we're doing a countdown to CinemaCon. And CinemaCon is on Monday, just a couple days from now, April 23rd. And there's going to be a panel at uh, CinemaCon with Sony hosting it. And hopefully we're going to get some new information about the movie there, about Venom, uh, maybe even about some of the shared universe stuff that uh, Sony's doing with the Venom movie with you know, Silver and Black, which is the Black Cat Silver Sable movie. Uh, then we also have Morbius, I guess, is in the works, and Night Watch as well. So hopefully we'll hear some of that, but mainly I just care about hearing about Venom news. So hopefully we'll get some Venom news, maybe a couple clips from the movie, some cast announcements, uh, an official image of what Venom's going to look like, and uh, all that stuff. But hopefully a new trailer too. I know that's around, it's a good time to release a trailer. There are possibly other trailers that are going to be, uh, you know, premiering at CinemaCon, and that's also the week leading into Avengers Infinity war and that's a good place to put a trailer for a movie like venom even though it's not a full-on superhero comic book movie but it still appeals to that audience you know even though they're taking it a different route they're doing a more sci-fi horror route with it i think having a clear-cut trailer showing you exactly what the movie's like showing you with the tone what the you know visual style they're going for i think putting that in front of avengers will get it the most you know views uh, at the theaters and that could help out a lot uh, but then also they could put it in front of deadpool a lot of you suggested that maybe they'll wait and put it in front of Deadpool since it might be another rated R comic book movie and they want to appeal to that audience. So either way, hopefully we'll get a trailer soon. So today, again, Carlton Drake, there's not a lot to say about this character. He's been in the comics for only a few years, kind of like Anne Wang. You know, he was just around for maybe like maybe 10 years tops. Um, but he started off in Amazing Spider-Man 298 and he first showed up on the scene to hire a criminal named Chance to go after uh, Spider-Man and, and, you know, he got involved with Spider-Man at least. Uh, but he hired uh, Chance for $25,000, something like that, and, uh, and sent him to, like, do these missions for him. And then Chance, you know, got double-crossed. He got captured by Carlton Drake, and then uh, Spider-Man ended up rescuing Chance, and together they, you know, broke out of this facility called the Sanctum Maximus, which was uh, uh, Carlton Drake's first, you know, a facility I guess that we know about in the comics and we learn about the Life Foundation around that time too uh, and both of these you know both Carlton Drake and Life Foundation were created by David Michelini and then also drawn by Todd McFarlane and created by Todd McFarlane so uh, so yeah if you want to pick up his first appearance Amazing Spider-Man 298 and 299 were like a two-part story that led right into the first appearance of Venom so Carlton Drake came out right around the same time as Venom did in the comic books uh, and he's also not a doctor in the comics so you know in the movie it looks like he's going to be a scientist or or they're calling him dr carlton drake uh at the life foundation in the comics he's more of like the owner of the life foundation or the leader as they call it because it's kind of cultish in a way um and we'll get into the Life Foundation in the next episode. I don't want to get too, too much into this because it'll send me on a path of talking about Resident Evil and the comparisons of the two and stuff. So I don't want to get too much into that and go down that rabbit hole. Uh, but in the comics, Carlton Drake and a guy named uh, Roland Treese are kind of the heads of, uh, of Life Foundation. But there's also like a board of directors and uh, they have a very specific interest and they have a very specific clientele that they're trying to protect and like i said we'll get into that in the next episode so i won't do too much of that here but carlton drake in this he you know he he at first kind of starts off as a spider-man villain he's hiring people to do things like chance then he ends up i think resurrecting this program called the tri-sentinel program and that's basically like this giant robot with three heads and it uh you know he resurrects that he's like all right i need i need protectors um for my clientele there's a big thing I'm going on, so they don't really spell it out fully at first, uh, but you kind of get seeds of it as, you know, the years progress and every time Carlton Drake, you know, re-pops up in the comics. Uh, so he's like, you know, I want to rebuild the Tri-Sentinel program and use that as our protector, but of course that 
robot becomes kind of sentient again like it was for the first time and starts going crazy and then spider-man and paladin and silver sable have to like take it down so uh so there's that and then there's uh, also the time where i don't know if maybe silver sable and paladin were in another story because there's it's I'm trying to keep it all together i think carlton drake also created these mutant not like mutant x-men type people but mutated people um to be like his protectors and then i think paladin and silver sable were in that storyline and so uh spider-man had to team up with them to take those uh those creatures down so you just see a pattern of carlton drake you know creating you know soup like hiring chance and then creating these mutant monsters and then also uh cr you know re bringing back this sentinel program this like unique sentinel to you know handle his uh his business like he basically needs these as protectors and you're like okay but what's going on why what do you need protecting and then it's you know as it's fleshed out more in venom lethal protector carlton drake shows up again uh roland treese has like a different agenda and they want to like find this you know gold that's in san francisco and they want to use that as money to help fund their project because after all the losses spider-man has cost them they want to bounce back and they want this they need this money to take life foundation back up to the next level and so Carlton Drake is like, you know, working on that, but he also learns a lot about the symbiote. And he, you know, over the years now, he's like, all right, this thing popped up around the same time I did. Maybe my answer was right in front of my face this whole time. So he starts learning everything he can about the symbiote secretly with a, a special sect of the Life Foundation and a group of scientists. And when they capture Venom in the, uh, you know, Lethal Protector miniseries, that's when they extract the, you know these seeds and they find out okay venom gave birth to carnage and it was from a seed and so there's other seeds like by our calculations there's at least five more seeds inside venom so they extract those and they use them to put them on five well-trained soldiers that work for the life foundation and make them the new protectors and so the big goal and everything that's been hiding and that they've been hiding stuff and uh and keeping secret is that the Life Foundation is like a, they're planning, the, they know the apocalypse is coming. And like I said, we'll dive more into this in the next episode with Life Foundation, but they know the apocalypse is coming. And so they have a bunch of rich people paying them to say, hey, look, when the apocalypse comes, we want you to put us in a bunker underground and uh, and we want protectors to make sure like nothing on earth, you know, uh, from any kind of fallout of radiation or anything like that. Because this is around the time of the Cold War when the first, you know, when they first appeared and they're like, we, anytime in any fallout of any war, we want to be protected. We don't want to, you know, get radiation poisoning or anything. And we want to stay underground until the earth is safe to go back on again. And we need people to protect the doors, you know, so nothing comes in to kill us in our sleep uh, while we're like in hibernation. And so they went through the mutant creature that he you know created he you know wasn't hiring chance for that reason but i think he was testing out chance's technology on his suit to see if that could be something they could use for protectors uh the tri-sentinel program so everything he's been creating and working with has been to protect this you know clientele uh in the wake of an apocalypse uh so uh so that's carlton drake's kind of main mission on earth is to create these protectors because he promised that he could keep these people safe once they go into hibernation in the in the case of a fallout of a war so uh so that's what he's doing so now he has five symbiotes and so that's what he creates in the comics in lethal protector so uh yeah this guy's kind of plan is, is very specific and he's gone all over the place from robots to you know alien creatures to mutated humans everything to do to protect uh his clientele the people that are paying him all this money to uh, to protect themselves but then in the end uh he, he finds out he has cancer actually which is a running theme in you know venom comics and stuff a lot of characters pop up with that and uh and so once he finds out he has cancer his goals kind of change and what he wants to do is he wants to protect himself now and uh and he goes to great lengths to do it and so in a spider-man miniseries called the arachnus project he does so and he ends up getting a uh, spider-man's dna and he ha he knows he has to and or he doesn't know but roland treese who is like now at this point kind of the star scream to his megatron he's like waiting to sell him out so roland treese is like yeah if you take this you know bit of spider-man dna and inject it in yourself it'll you know help cure what's going on even though roland treese knew that after they manipulated the dna you have to drink it so if you drink it it'll help out but if you ingest it or inject it in like through a syringe it'll have a different effect and roland treese knew this so he did it to sabotage carlton drake so when carlton drake uh you know took the syringe and injected himself he ended up turning into a giant monster called uh you know homo arachnus or something like that and i'll have the images and stuff popping up here but yeah so he turns himself into a monster and then 
Venom shows up and him and Spider-Man end up taking down uh, Carlton Drake once and for all. So what does this mean for the movie? And I'll be, obviously that's the last time we've ever seen him in the comics, so he hasn't been back since. Uh, but Roland Treese, I think, got away and is still out there to an extent. And we'll talk about him probably in another episode because it looks like Scott Hayes might be playing him, but I want to get full confirmation about that before we get into it. But one thing we haven't considered yet is that, you know, a lot of us wanted Scott Hayes to play Cletus Cassidy. We wanted to see him as a symbiote creature, as a monster. That may still be possible. Uh, you know, in the in the stuff we've seen with Roland, you know, Roland Treese, he's like choking out Venom. He's like the, the number one guard from Carlton Drake and Life Foundation chasing Venom in the car chase sequence from the footage we saw in Atlanta of people filming them you know, film in the streets, and we saw him, like, choke, you know, taser uh, Venom and then choke him down, and then, uh, you know, Eddie Brock stands back up, grabs him, and, like, you know, throws him to the side or something. So we've seen stuff like that. So it's a chance that Scott Hayes may still have a symbiote in this movie, but he just may not be Carnage, but maybe he'll be one of the other characters. Uh, but we'll talk about that more when we do a, a Scott Hayes, you know, episode uh, for Roland Trees. Uh, but for now, you know, what does this mean for the movie? Carlton Drake, like, will we see him mutate into a monster by the end of this movie? Does he have cancer? Is that going to be a theme? Because I know a lot of you were thinking Eddie Brock might have cancer in this movie, and that's why he's an MRI. I don't think that. I think, you know, the they're focusing on the, the early years of Eddie Brock, and at this point we didn't know he had cancer in the comics. So I'm thinking he's just in that MRI because he has the symbiote in him. And he wants to see what exactly is going on and why he's twitching. Uh, but maybe Carlton Drake has cancer or has a loved one who has cancer and he's trying to cure it. Maybe those are, you know, some of his new goals in the movie. We don't know yet. Hopefully the next trailer will give us a little bit more insight on what the story is. Uh, but who knows, maybe we'll see him turn into a monster in this movie and maybe it'll be a giant, you know, spider monster. <laughs> who knows? Uh, but you guys let me know what you think in the comments below. Uh, is there anything about Carlton Drake's life that I missed that you think is uh, worth mentioning? We can talk about that down below. And uh, do you have a favorite Carlton Drake moment? Um, you know, I know he hasn't been in many comics, but he's had some pretty interesting appearances in my opinion. And to make him a doctor and make him head of Life Foundation in a different way and more a scientific way for the movie sounds pretty interesting. And I think Riz Ahmed is going to do a good job. Um, I'm a big fan of Bodhi Rook when he played that character in Rogue One. I actually thought he was one of the more standout characters for me because as a from a range actor, like he had a scene where he was scared and crying. He had a scene where he was traumatized. And then he had a scene where he was like doing something heroic. And that to me shows the the range of that that you know, actor and Riz Ahmed himself. And I thought he had a lot of, you know, had a lot of depth in that movie for the few scenes he had. So I can't imagine him as a villain. I'm very excited about that. So let's talk about that as well down below. And again, remember to keep leaving your comments of what you hope we'll see at CinemaCon. And I will make a video this weekend and reading your comments and responding to them. So thanks so much for watching my channel. As always, like, share, subscribe, all that fun stuff. And I'll see you in the future. Peace.